Hey everyone, welcome to the UVD Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Travis Likens. And I'm Ben Pierce. And we're here today with a special episode where we are going to talk about the Cause Companion re-release? Question mark? If that's what you call it. And we want to thank loyal follower Jeremy for spurring us on this. Yeah, so uh, there's been some talk. Uh, recently, the artist Cause did a release of his companion figures and his companion dissected figures which um, if you're not a follower of the scene, uh, it's a pretty very popular icon design. Iconic, yeah. Yeah, iconic design from the designer toy scene. And uh, it released in approximately 2006-ish and on mm -hmm. um, in a few different colorways, uh, the mono, the brown, and the black version. Um, and uh, these new versions are pretty much the same thing. Just a little bit different size. Yeah, just a little different size. And... Um, Currently do not have the, um, from everything I've heard, do not have the original fake, um, which was Cause's brand tied behind it. So it's, uh, you know, on its own. But these were released during the recent uh, art show that he had at the the Modern. In Dallas-Fort Worth. In Dallas-Fort Worth. And uh, the show was called, uh, what was it called, Ben again? It is Where the End Starts. Where the End Starts. So that begs the question, is this the end of Cause? Or no, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not. But <laughs> what does this mean to a lot of people who spend a lot of money on these originals? Yeah, so this happens in almost every collector market to a certain extent. Um, if it's been something that's been popular in recent times, usually there's a re-release of it. Um, and generally, the re-releases are slightly different. So a good example of this would be shoes. Um, an original pair of Jordan ones, you know, $1,500 all day, but you can go buy, um, occasionally from time to time, a new pair, um, from Foot Locker when they release them and you have to go fight people for them, uh, for $150, $200, whatever they are these days. Um, does that affect the value of the original pair? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, there's always going to be people that want the original one over the new one. Uh, these cause ones, I think. They're a different size. So that does, you know, there, there is that difference between it. So you're not going to changes it marginally. Yeah. But it, but it's not like if you sat them next to each other, you could easily identify that one is the original one mm -hmm. versus the new one, which pro proves to be the same difference in that. It's the same difference as having one of the bootlegs. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a different size. The bootleg is going to be a different size, but it's still the fact that you have like a cause, even if it's not a real cause, you can put yeah. it up there. 90% of the people are not going to know the difference unless you say something. Yeah. But and it's, I, th I think, uh, as I was talking with some people, is that to a lot of people, it's the principle of owning, just owning a cause piece, even if it's $200, which I think is a little bit high for an open edition, but I guess that's a different, that's a different opinion, topic. Right? No, I'm just kidding. Different topic. Uh, um, the... See, my thing with it is, is that I have always wanted one of these. I actually did not get one of the open editions. That's a whole nother topic with how <laughs> the website seemed to work. Um, but I would have never paid a thousand bucks, a thousand plus dollars that these typically tend to go for. Um, but I, would I be any less upset if I hadn't, if I got this $200 one versus the $1,200 one? No. I really just would like to own one because it's an iconic design from our scene. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that changes that some people either A, want all of Cause's stuff, or B, would like to have the original release of the, of the figure. Now, my question um, kind of stemming from this, and this is something we won't know unless you, the readers and listeners and viewers that maybe got one, and when you guys get it, um, and if you happen to have the original as well, what's the quality? Are these two hundred dollar figures a high quality? I mean, or are they, they, or are they poorly painted? Yeah, because I mean, the original ones were like one hundred eighty dollars, and these were two hundred. The originals were bigger. It was ten years ago ish, so kind of makes sense that these littler ones would cost more now. Um, but sometimes when a thing is redone and re released. Sometimes the quality goes down in order to cut cost and corners. So, yeah, I mean, I guess originally weren't is it wasn't an edition of five hundred. Yeah, they were originally released, uh, 
um, limited to 500 pieces. Whereas it, I think from what we saw on the site, it was a thousand as an open edition, which yeah. I guess they sold out of a thousand. They may make more. So is two hundred dollars appropriate for an open edition? I don't know. Again, it's it's an intrinsic mm-hmm. value. Like I I would have liked to seen it um probably more around the like hundred 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 and twenty mark, twenty five. Yeah. But I mean it is still uh eleven inches of vinyl. If you go with the old uh, adage of uh, ten dollars per inch, should have been about a hundred and ten dollars. Which I mean, it is a cause figure, though. Buying for the name. So you you slap a little name on there, and it's not cheap to make these things. We, or we, also the fact that you're paying the gallery fee, too. So Yeah, there's probably some element of that involved in it. Um, they look good, though. Yeah. I mean, they, they look good. For the fact that we had small little photos that barely loaded on websites. No, I had, well, I saw the photos before, though. Like, oh, you know, the yeah, the photo of the figure. Yeah. But yeah, the, the website, though, this release... They, this this uh, museum was not ready, like period, not ready for this release as far as like website wise, because this thing was up and down, left and right when I was on there trying to grab yeah. one. Um, and I think part of it, well, not part of it, because I never actually had the chance to buy it. But I think there was probably some people that went through that whole hassle mm-hmm. of trying to buy it. And once they got to the point of being able to buy it, may have backed out because they'd had like 40 minutes to think about it. Yeah, I still don't know about mine. I got two emails saying I could buy it, but. And I never went through with actually like giving them credit card information. Oh, so you uh, got to the point where you got it in your cart, got yeah. it ordered, but didn't pay yet. Yes. And so they then emailed you that you could buy one. Apparently. Then you were able to buy one. Oh, I just haven't yet. That was the, that was the, um, because their w- website was having such trouble. That was how they kind of like huh. circumvented it at a certain point. I guess they like set it up to where people got them in their cart and got to the buy part, but they couldn't actually check out. They would then later email you. Huh. So then you you had the shot. We could have been having it on the table. I guess technically I still have a shot unless they kind sold of it out from under you. Booted me. <laughs> now they probably gave you a certain amount of days, I'd imagine. I haven't looked at the email recently. Well, look at that, Mr. I probably could have got one and <laughs> didn't read the email. <laughs> I'm not going to buy it anyway. Uh-oh. Yeah, we really wanted one, but after all that time and thinking about it, I kind of said, you know what, this is too much of a hassle for something that um, I can live without, I guess, if I had to. Yeah. <laughs> so, but as far as the, the figure itself, damaging collectors, I mean, it does put more companions out in the market. Now, these are different size companions. Um, I, I would say that generally in history, things that are reissues of something do not command the value that the originals do. There probably are some examples where that is not true. But uh, I... I don't know that it's going to kill the original value. It may dent it, but I don't think it's going to kill it. What do you think, Ben? Um, I think it provides a boost to that market in that people are still probably going to try to pay upwards of $1,000 for the originals. But at some point, they're going to possibly or most likely stop making these the open, the open edition. edition yeah so then that price is going to go from 200 to 400 or whatever something. yeah <laughs> over time and then cause will come back like oh look here's, here's a 11.6 inch figure here's the snoopy figure that's 10 years old at this point here's the woodstock figure here's pinocchio yep. or whatever star so, wars yeah those would be good reissues <laughs> i'm sure you'd buy those i'd probably buy those <laughs> i'd probably buy this i remember uh, back in the day like on fancy factory rob dyrdek had one on his desk that was mm-hmm. pretty cool but uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't think it's going to kill the value. Like it's just co- collecting wise, that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, some people are always going to want the original and that's a different type of collector than somebody who's buying to save money. So like, it's a different market. The person who was going to pay $1,200 before is still able to pay $1,200 now, unless, you know, they were buying it and they shouldn't have been in the first place. So if they always wanted that particular figure, I don't know that they're going to substitute with this one. Yeah, I know it's like shocking as a collector as a collector when you see, oh man, they're redoing something that I already had. But so many markets have gone through this already. And yeah, the it may limit the thing from gaining more value over time, but I don't think it's gonna kill it. I just don't think it's gonna drop to you know, something that used to sell for a thousand plus is gonna be 
in the 600 range. I don't, I don't see that happening. It may, I think it might flutter down a tad just because people can now buy a smaller version for less. So, but I just I mean, the, the price, the price may stick, but the number of buyers may shrink. Yeah. But I, I just don't see it completely going away. I just like, like people are worried. It's like, Oh, it's going to kill the entire like cost of this figure. And I just don't see that happening. It it just doesn't make a lot of logical sense when you think of normal collector market. Yeah. And uh, obviously cause collectors are not part of the normal subset as far as like art. They're like more, he tends to draw in some more art collectors than mm-hmm. just toy collectors. And so I think as far as cause is concerned, he has cemented his name throughout his multiple ventures, whether it be the Macy's day parade stuff or MTV, MTV or the shows across the world where they have giant, like 20 foot tall wooden figures. Yep. So I, I think the value may stick or obviously will stick. Um, like it's not going to cra- yep. cra- crash. Like if say, uh, like mind style started releasing the buff monsters, their old buff monsters aren't going to raise in value because yep. Because there's not a out. huge value for those anyway. Like as far as like with co- like in relative mm-hmm. to cause when they originally cost some a certain number and now they're twenty thousand times that price. Yeah. But um, it does raise the question of just like you said, what if Kid Robot said, you know what, that Kozik Red Rum Dunny, we're going to redo that again. Now, do you think other possible toy brands are going to try a similar? I, I was activity. I, I was talking to to Jeremy about this. We emailed back and forth a couple of times. It would not surprise either of us. One and two. That's a completely different matter because that just completely pisses everyone off. Yeah. When when you're either making like like you said the the red rums or you end up making like the three inch like the Kronk gingerbread ones that people fight each other over or like some of the old ones where like if you're purposely making like the black mad uh, ninja figure or the Kazakh red rum chase or any of the chases just say, Oh, here you wanted the opportunity to buy one. Here it is. Yep. It just, it, it kills whatever anybody actually cherishes as like the limited amount. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that I, I don't, I really hope that other toy companies don't jump on this bandwagon because I don't think, the toy market that is like a dunny market or any of those kind of things can't support that kind of flood. Yeah. I think cause in a way gets away with this because he has more than 500 fans. Mm-hmm. He has more than a thousand people that are trying to buy his stuff. So his market can take a bubble of mm-hmm. more things. Whereas like, you know, smaller artists can't take an influx of the same thing being mm-hmm. released. It's not possible. Which I guess along the cause line is the same difference as say, like the Power Rangers legacy stuff coming back out. It's almost the exact same stuff minus the fact that it's die cast. But yep, now people don't have to try to buy like original Megazords or yep. what whatever example you can use, whether it's yeah, he, choose He Man or yeah. whatever other toys. Yep, and the, and the thing is though, like a lot of times though, like Power Rangers is a good example. They tried to make it better than the yeah. original. Um, the cause one, I don't know. It, we we haven't seen one in hand, obviously, yeah. but uh, it it seems like it's basically the same figure except for smaller. <laughs> Look, looking through my email, I don't think they they didn't give me a link to actually follow to try to finish uh, orders. You so. were out. You couldn't buy it. <laughs> that was even in in the original, like original. Hey, here's your update, sort of stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a. Uh, it looks like a great figure. I wish I could have got one. If you happen to be listening to modern, let us know. <laughs> but. Um, we are excited and sad at the same time that this kind of activity is going on mm-hmm. because it does give people an opportunity to get something that they never would have gotten. That's awesome. Yeah. But as if you're a collector that has one of these that maybe bought it on a secondary market in hopes of it going up more and more in value, I don't know if it's going to go up anymore. I don't know if it's going to fall. I just don't know if it's going to continue to rise. The, I guess it also begs the question of why, why make something that's already existent if you're cause and you're probably trying to push your boundaries other than I would say I'll label it as a cash grab. You know, people, there's everyone wants these. Yep. They're going to sell. Ta-da. There's the money. 
yeah. about some old stuff and yeah. make some money. Yeah. And I mean, it's been, it's been long enough though mm. that a whole new generation of collectors have been, that never had access to it. Yeah. Maybe he's trying to get to those people. I, I don't know. Or really, he probably doesn't care. He's just, here's a figure, buy it. Yep. I'll buy it. And it is his, it is his signature figure too. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like, I think it'd be a little more suspect if he re-released like the Pinocchio or something that was more, less his original design. Like where it's the ones where he's just kind of like pillaging pop culture type yeah. thing. So I don't know. We just wanted to talk about that. What do you guys think about this cause re-release? Let us know in the comments down below of our video here or by emailing us over at urbanvinyldaily at gmail.com. Uh, you want to keep up with our daily antics over on our website, urbanvinyldaily.com. Uh, we talk about this and so much more going on in the designer toys, street art, and Safubi world. Um, also, a, a new pitch we're going to make is if you like what we said, share the video and leave a comment when you're sharing it. If you hate what we said, share the video and leave a negative comment about what we said. Yeah. Either way, share the video, please. Yeah. And if you... Um, happen to want to keep up with us on Instagram or Twitter, make sure to follow us at urban vinyl daily. Um, but that's about it. We're, uh, just trying to figure out what you guys think. We, we are kind of on the fence a little bit. We see the benefits of doing it. We see the downside of doing it. It's really kind of a double edged sword and it, it does suck for collectors that have it, but it's kind of cool for people that didn't have access to it. And so. it, and if you start to openly say, well, I have, I have the original, you just sound pompous. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have the original. These ones suck because they're smaller. <laughs> so uh, let us know what you you're think. hipster like that. Oh, 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 he couldn't end it there. He had to pull it out. But anyway, <laughs> let us know what you think. As always, I'm Travis. And I'm Ben. Have a great designer toy day. This is Travis Likens from Token Nerd Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you something about sponsorship. That's right. Token Nerd now has a sponsor. The fine folks at TenaciousToys.com, your source for designer toys, pop vinyl, original art, and more, are now our sponsor. And guess what? As a part of that, you can get 10% off your next order at TenaciousToys.com by entering the code TOKEN10 at checkout. That's right, 10% off. And not only are they giving you this code, they're also going to be sponsoring many of our token nerd giveaways in the next coming months. So make sure to follow us at token underscore nerd on Instagram to catch our latest giveaways.